My task today is to talk on chronic liver disease and COVID-19 infection. This is the outline of my talk. I will go and I'm going to mention mechanism of liver injury and COVID-19 disease, mention the impact of cirrhosis on the outcome of SARS-CoV-2 infection. Same, similarly, the etiology of chronic liver disease on the outcome of SARS-CoV-2 infection and finish with chronic bile hepatitis. The severe acute respiratory syndrome coronavirus 2 infection or SARS-CoV-2 infection has caused more than 220 million infections and over four and a half million deaths as of September 2021. We never really have learned early on that comorbidities, including chronic liver disease, contributes to the severity and mortality of SARS-CoV infection and COVID-19 disease. What are the mechanisms of liver injury in COVID-19? It makes sense to think that COVID-19, SARS-CoV-2 infection may would, would affect the liver directly, but the mechanism by which SARS-CoV-2 affects the liver is not well defined. It is actually unclear if SARS-CoV directly causes primary in liver injury, but there, are some, there is some evidence, as I will point out in this, on this slide. First of all, the cell entry receptor of SARS-CoV-2, ACE2, is expressed on 58% of bile duct cells, but in only 2.6% of hepatocytes. This appears to be uh, somewhere somewhat controversial because alkaline phosphate is the least affected liver enzyme. An explanation has been, put, has been put forward that suggests that SARS-CoV-2 may undergo low-level replication in cholangiocytes without triggering cell death. Another study which suggests that SARS-CoV-2 affects the liver directly is the following. It has been shown that ultrastructural examination of two COVID-19 patients identified typical spike structure coronavirus particles in the cytoplasm of hepatocytes. And this was associated with massive apoptosis and CD4, CD8 post lymphocytes, indicative of a typical viral infection. Other possible mechanisms of liver enzyme elevation include immune mediated systemic inflammation, the so called bystander hepatitis, which can be in the form of a cytokine storm and leads to activation of the innate and adaptive immune system and, 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 and enhanced IL 6 production. Drug in his liver injury is a possibility. Hepatic congestion due to cardiomyopathy, extra hepatic transaminase release due to COVID 19, associated rhabdomyolysis of skeletal and cardiac muscle are uh, possible mechanisms. ASD, predominant elevation of transaminases, should suggest alcoholic liver disease, ischemic hepatitis, cirrhosis. Uh, but certain COVID 19 related that might control dysfunction. Hepatic steatosis, cystic hepatic vascular thrombosis in microthrombotic disease, as well as ASD elevation uh, due to uh, other. It has to be remembered that the ASD elevation has been also reported with viral pneumonia, such as influenza, and this has also take, take, needs to be taken into consideration. Liver biochemistry abnormalities is observed in roughly 15 to 65 percent of patients. And these abnormalities are characterized by small elevations of ALT and AST, less than three times and mostly two, less than two times the upper limit of normal. Hypoalbuminemia on the long term may herald worse prognosis. The impact of cirrhosis has been shown in early studies. When we speak about chronic liver disease, we have to mention that cirrhosis is the main thing which causes significant uh, disease severity and mortality. One of the first studies dealing with this subject was the study from England published in Nature in spring 2020, based on analysis of the National Health Service Registry in England and encompassing uh, almost 11,000 COVID-19 COVID related deaths. This study early on showed that old age is a very significant contributor to mortality, but it has also shown that comorbidities such as diabetes, chronic kidney disease, chronic heart disease, stroke, and liver disease contribute to severity of liver disease, severity of COVID-19 disease and mortality. 
And this is an important registry, the easel registry, because it, it, it encompasses a large group of patients. And basically what the study has shown is, please note that blue bar is for content, chronic liver disease without cirrhosis, red stays, red bar is for compensated cirrhosis, and green and purple bars are child Q, B, and C cirrhosis respectively. And the main message here is the more advanced cirrhosis is, the higher the ICU requirement, ICU admissions, invasive ventilation, and death. Similar studies data have been produced from Asia. And one important thing about this multi-center study from Asia is that it basically showed that chronic liver disease without cirrhosis, chronic hepatitis without cirrhosis, is not associated with a higher mortality compared to patients without liver disease. So mortality rates were not increased in non cirrhotic chronic, chronic hepatitis. Whereas in cirrhosis, the more advanced the disease, the more higher the mortality due to COVID-19. Now, one final study I want to mention is from the US, and this is the study from Bajaj, which showed that cirrhosis plus COVID-19, 37 patients. Compared, they, it, they, they were compared with 108 patients with COVID-19 alone and 127 with cirrhosis alone. And basically, cirrhosis plus COVID-19 had a 30% mortality. This was significantly higher than the COVID-19 alone mortality of 13%. But the cirrhosis alone mortality was 20% and it, it was not significantly different than the cirrhosis and COVID-19 combined mortality of 30%. But it is important to mention that cirrhosis alone group were a distinct group because they drank and smoked more than the other two groups. And this is something which we have to bear in mind because, I will, as I will mention in a few slides later, patients with cirrhosis and COVID-19 had worse Charleston comorbidity index versus COVID-19 alone. And the CCI was the only independent mortality predictor. And what is the CCI or the Charleston Corbin with index? It basically shows the important contribution of comorbidities such as chronic heart disease, liver disease, neuro neurological disease, and other diseases to the outcome of COVID 19 disease. We mentioned, we I already mentioned the importance of cirrhosis. Why is cirrhosis associated with higher mortality? It is basically based on cirrhosis associated immune dysfunction and how cirrhosis associated immune dysfunction causes diseases depicted in this cartoon, which shows that there, is, there are defects in immune response, not, at, not only in the liver locally, but also it has systemic effects and, and systemic shunting and defect in hepatic protein synthesis contribute to this cirrhosis associated immune dysfunction. Etiology of chronic liver disease. How important is the etiology of chronic liver disease in SARS-CoV-2 infected patients' outcome? Non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, hepatitis B, hepatitis C, none of them were uh, affected mortality by multivariate analysis. But alcoholic liver disease was the only predictor of mortality, independent predictor of mortality as it is etiology of chronic liver disease. Similarly, what was not shown was on the, on the previous slide was autoimmune hepatitis. Here in this slide, in this study, autoimmune hepatitis contribution to mortality was compared to other etiologies of chronic liver disease. And there was no difference in mortality or severe outcome compared to when compared to other etiologies or versus autoimmune hepatitis. So autoimmune hepatitis is not an independent predictor of severe liver disease, but alcoholic liver disease is a contributor. And we have mentioned the importance of alcoholic liver disease uh, in WGO guidelines of COVID-19 and liver disease were contributed to its writing as early as August of 2020. We had said that alcohol may be amongst the populations that are most severely impacted during the COVID-19 era for a couple of reasons. First of all, they have a depressed immune system they have comorbidities such as obesity and metabolic syndrome. Their inability to reduce to attend regular visits by providers in social isolation leads to their psychological decompensation and increased drinking or relapse drinking. 
they are, they are often smokers and have chronic lung disease, which is another comorbidity. These patients also may be less willing to adopt suggested precautions for COVID-19 pre prevention, hence their importance as a disease. Finally, chronic viral hepatitis. This is a review published recently in the World Journal of Gastroenterology. I want to mention most of these studies are unimportant. That's based on a small number of patients, but I want to mention two studies. This study by Zhu et al. encompassed 105 patients with chronic hepatitis B and COVID-19. And they, for only 12% received antiviral treatment for hepatitis B. There were four cases of, of acute on chronic liver failure, and all of them died. None of them had received antiviral treatment for hepatitis B. In the study by Liu et al., there were only 21 patients with chronic hepatitis B, although it's 347, but there were only 21 patients with chronic hepatitis B. Only one had cirrhosis was getting antiviral treatment. The rest of 20 patients did not get to receive antiviral treatment. And there were three patients with hepatitis, with hepatitis B reactivation. If they had been, if they had cirrhosis, this would be a problem. So antiviral treatment appears to be important. The most important study is IMPRESS on H dealing with HPV and COVID-19 in hepatology. And basically, this is a study from Hong Kong where subject diagnosed between January 2020 and January 21, all COVID-19 patients have been assessed. And basically, 4,900 without HPV were compared with 200, 353 patients with HPV. And 122 of 353 patients with HPV had received antiviral treatment for HPV. Of them, 73 initiated treatment after COVID-19 diagnosis. Acute liver injury was associated with mortality, but not current HPV infection. Use of steroids and other uh, treatments were also associated with acute liver injury, but not HPV. So uh, again, it shows that HPV is not important, but we have to be reminded that they, they were very good treated for, for their HPV. The cumulative probability of mortality after extending extensive propensity score matching to control for confounders displayed that there was absolutely no difference in the cumulative instance of mortality between patients with HPV, with past HPV, and without HPV. 70% of current HPV patients received antiviral prophylaxis with nucleosidinal analog during steroid treatment. Again, very important. Uh, among 26 patients with severe COVID-19 on steroid treatment, 6% who used antiviral treatment with nucleus analogs developed acute liver failure were, as this was 22% in those patients who did not use nucleus analog treatment, again, highlighting the importance of antiviral treatment for hepatitis B. HCV, I want to show one important study because most there, there's not much about hepatitis C and uh, SARS-CoV-2 infection. Basically, studies show that mortality is not increased. It is based, it is the electronically retrieved cohort of HCV infected veterans. Database was used in this study, the archives, which is based on a quarter million, around quarter million HCV patients. Uh, and in those patients which, who were tested for SARS-CoV-2, there were Finally, there were 1,000 patients with SARS-CoV-2 and HCV. And finally, 907 patients, 75 patients were matched with propensity after propensity score matching with 975 patients without HCV. And what happened, well, the final result is that, uh, please, if you check the PIP4 score, you will see that patients with HCV have a more severe disease than non-HCV patients, but mortality did not differ between the two patients. I want to finish with two case reports from with Delta hepatitis, the only voice which I did not mention. This is a 59-year-old woman with chronic Delta hepatitis on multivariate. She was on multi, multi uh, maintained viral response since October 2 to 2018 after receiving the soon cumulative seven years of pain interferon alpha treatment. In January 2020, a fibro scan displayed 7.9 kilopascals, which is, which, is which is associated with 
non-cirrhotic chronic hepatitis. This patient was diagnosed with COVID-19 in July 2020. So until July 2020, she enjoyed very normal liver enzymes and negative HDV RNA. In July 2020, her ALD rose to 20, 92. And then in August 2020, its HDV RNA re-emerged with in terms of in the context of five flocks of HDV RNA. ALT rose in September of 2020 to 488. There was a slight decrease after September in HDV RNA, but as of February 2021, her ALT was again 356, and she accepted to receive another course of interferon treatment, and she's doing now fine. The second case is a 50-year-old woman with compensated cirrhosis of chronic red delta hepatitis. She had grade 2 esophageal varices and oocytes. She entered the Lonafani protocol, phase 3 study on Lonafani, in on March 2020, and was randomized to treatment with 50 milligrams Lonafani with ritonavir, BID or placebo placebo. We don't know which treatment she received because it's a double-blind study. And she was diagnosed in COVID with COVID-19 in August 2020. So this, at, in January 2020, her ALT was 139. At screening, day one, it was 187, it decreased to 40, and there was a more than one log decrease of HDV RNA after three months. Diagnosis of COVID-19 in August, in September, a few weeks later, she was already HDV negative, probably due to the treatment she, has, she was receiving, and she enjoyed totally normal liver enzymes. And this continued like that. So this is my last slide. And, and, and I, uh, I want to summarize COVID-19 chronic viral hepatitis. Four viruses were related to this talk, SARS-CoV-2, HPV, HCV, HTV. We know that we have very effective treatments against HPV, HCV. No effective treatment for SARS-CoV-2. No effective treatment for Delta virus. Hence, in case of SARS-CoV-2, host factors determine outcomes. Comorbidities are very important. Therefore, uh, cirrhosis is important, and we have to treat patients with chronic viral hepatitis if we, if we have the possibility, such as in hepatitis B and hepatitis C. In HDV, it's like both viruses. HDV is another example, and both viruses, HDV and SARS-CoV-2, are in need for proper urgent treatment. I thank you for your attention.